Hello again, welcome to another little wrap up of 2021. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my favourite TV shows that I've seen this year. Once again, just got their synopses up in front of me just to remind me of the details, although I remember all of these quite well actually. A few of them were very, very recent. Um, so I feel like I can remember the details this time. A little bit more than the movies, some of which I watched in like January or February. But uh, here we go, we've got five-ish on the list, gonna be doing the same as we did with the movies. We've got five TV shows that are absolutely fantastic, that I massively enjoyed and that I'm 100% gonna recommend to you. Uh, we've also got one special mention at the end. I feel like top six just sounds a little bit weirder, you know? Anyway, let's get into it. So first up, we've got an animated series called Invincible that was on Amazon Prime in the UK and I think it was on TV in the US, though I couldn't tell you which channel, obviously. Um, but it features J.K. Simmons and Stephen Yeun, who you might know from The Walking Dead. It was also partly written by Robert Kirkman, who also worked on The Walking Dead, and it's based off a comic book series. It's very graphic. Um, despite it being animated, would not recommend it to children in the slightest. And uh, it's about a young man who realises that he has inherited the superpowers of his father, who is very conveniently called Omni-Man, which is like, it sounds like a super generic superhero name, but then you realise that there's literally a dude called Superman, so what does it really matter? Anyway, Mark Grayson finds out that he has inherited these powers and sets out to become his own superhero, although his father does not think this is a very good idea, but kind of reluctantly starts teaching him while dealing with his own stuff that is a whole other storyline that I'm not going to get into. His mother, meanwhile, is completely against the idea, which is totally fair enough, because even if you are the son of an indestructible, pretty much god's godlike superhero, um, you're... you're not quite invincible, despite the name of the TV show. But uh, yeah, definitely recommend that one. Like I said, definitely not for children. Uh, it's very gory. There's a lot of blood, a lot of very, very violent fighting. And a lot of swearing as well. It's pretty, pretty up there in the vulgarity scale, but fantastic series nonetheless. Okay, next up is one that I think everybody on the planet watched. It became Netflix's top series which does not surprise me at all, and it is the South Korean show Squid Game, which, yeah, I can hear you rolling your eyes because you're thinking, well, this is in everyone's top list, and yeah, you know, there's a reason for that. It's very good. Um, I will say, no spoilers, the last few episodes kind of left a bit to be desired in my eyes. It does set up a sequel, which I don't know, I don't really know where they're going to go with that, or when it'll come out, or even if they're working on it. You know what, I don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know shit. But uh, yeah, it features hundreds of very cash-strapped people essentially competing in death games. And the winner takes all. So uh, there's a certain amount of money for every competitor. goes into a nice big piggy bank. Very stylish. And whoever's left alive at the end goes home with it. And uh, it features a lot, of, a lot of characters who know each other. Which obviously adds a whole extra dimension to it. Because it's like, am I really going to go into this game with the intention of killing someone I've known for years and it gets it gets pretty heavy it's got some real good emotional beats in it it's got a few episodes which brought a manly tear to my eye they weren't manly they never are it's it's just a, i'm just a sobbing mess but uh yeah it's it's good it's damn good and uh it does feature some very interesting um english parts interesting is probably the only way to describe them they're <laughs> Not particularly high quality, uh, it's a little bit weird, I'm not entirely sure why they even included those parts. But you'll see what I mean when you get to watching it. So if you like things like Battle Royale or The Hunger Games or, well, a lot of things like that, you'll probably really enjoy Squid Game. Unless you've already seen it and already enjoyed it. And like I said, pretty much everyone on the planet's seen it at this point, but it's got to make it to that list because it is very, very good. Alright, let's move on. Okay, the third one on my list is another entry into the MCU series, and it is a Disney Plus series called Loki, which follows our Loki after Avengers Endgame, but also, I guess, technically after Avengers Assemble at the same time. Essentially, this is a spoiler for Endgame, but it's been three years, and if you're interested in the MCU, if you haven't watched Endgame, then I, I don't know what you're doing with your life. So I'm going to spoil that a little bit, but essentially... 
Loki gets teleported out of New York, or teleports himself out of New York, in 2012, first Avengers movie, and ends up captured by a secret department somewhere out there in the cosmic nonsense of the universe called the TVA. And basically they recruit him to hunt what they think is himself. Basically they're chasing another Loki, he explains, or the people in the TVA explain that there are hundreds, maybe thousands, of other versions of Loki scattered across the multiverse. Very complex, but essentially he's after himself. Does he find himself? You'll find out if you watch it. <laughs> Does he find himself? It's a soul-searching, family-friendly TV series about a man striking out to find himself. It's not very family-friendly, but it's out there. Anyway, Features a fantastic supporting performance from Owen Wilson as well, as well as a lovely few other faces. And it's really, like I said, complex but interesting. Features Loki jumping across multiple different universes. And also features a fantastic... I'm hesitant to call it a cameo because he's in it for a lot, a lot longer than a cameo. Um, but it features a fantastic performance from Richard E. Grant as well. And... The whole episode with him is absolutely stunning, and you need to see that for yourselves. Um, but yeah, essentially, across this whole ridiculous caper of Loki hunting himself across the multiverse, um, it sets off the next sort of phase in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it'll set up a lot of movies. Um, it'll probably set up quite a lot of stuff that's going to be in the next Ant-Man film. Not 100% sure on that, but I know a certain person who appears in Loki will be appearing in Ant-Man as well. And it really sets off this whole ridiculous chain reaction of events that is already sort of coming to fruition in movies like Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, the next Doctor Strange, and like I said, Ant-Man as well, uh, which I'm really excited to see where they go with that. But it's absolutely bonkers. Beautiful CGI, absolutely beautiful. Fantastic costume work as well. And it's a really interesting setting. It's sort of this... Um, Oh, I don't know what the word for... I suppose it's kind of an Art Deco kind of 70s kind of aesthetic to it. Yeah, I guess that's probably the closest description of it. But it's a, it's a very different sort of setting than we're used to in the MCU. It's not that, you know, standard modern kind of thing that we're used to in the modern day films. It's this very sort of old, more historical kind of style to it. And it's very, very interesting. So definitely give that a watch if you've got Disney+. Plus. Okay, I'm not done shilling for Disney+, Plus yet, because if you're in the UK, you can watch the next TV show that I'm going to talk about, which is one called Only Murders in the Building. Um, I was a little bit late to this one. I watched it maybe a couple of months after it came out, and it's very different to the other series I've talked about. No violence. Well, there is some murder. Some light mur Yeah, there's some murder. And maybe a little bit of violence. But it's mostly a comedy series, despite the murders. And as you can gather, it's about murders in a building. So it follows Steve Martin and Martin Short, as well as Selena Gomez, all living in a building in New York, and they discover that one of their neighbours has been murdered. And all three of these characters are like massive fans of true crime podcasts. They're all listening to the same one, and that's sort of how they bond. And they decide, well, the police have ruled this as a suicide, but we don't believe that because they're so obsessed with like these true crime podcasts that they absolutely insist that there's been some kind of foul play at work here. So they set off trying to investigate this murder and they go through the past of the victim, the past of themselves a little bit as well, and they start their own podcast about the murder and trying to investigate it. And they gather sort of this huge sort of fan group, I guess, who follow the podcast and know where they live and know about the building and everything and they sort of pop up every now and then which is quite amusing but it's just a very funny pretty well written kind of murder mystery i guess and it just follows these th three complete non-professionals just absolute amateurs trying to discover what really happened when their neighbor died and it's got some incredible performances steve martin in particular is just 100% perfect. In this series, there's a few scenes that had me just dying laughing at some of the stuff he was doing because he's absolutely brilliant in this. So if you like murder mysteries and you like comedies, you should definitely give that a watch. And that's also on Disney+. Plus. 
Mickey the Mouse owes me the bag. Okay, number five on our list, and definitely not number five in my heart. It is the new Netflix series called Arcane, which came out in three different blocks, although I watched it all in one go because I... Well, I'm really glad I watched it all in one go, actually, uh, because it was unbelievably addictive. Um, Arcane is about several characters from the League of Legends universe, and I know nothing about League of Legends. Never played it. I've barely even seen any gameplay. All I know is that it's a MOBA and it features these characters. So, um, yeah, it's like, it's a prequel series to, I guess, whatever storyline the game has, which again, I got absolutely no idea. Uh, but it follows Jinx and Vi and Jace, Victor, Mel, Caitlyn, I'm just rattling off names. The names mean absolutely nothing to me because, again, I don't really have a relationship with any of these characters. However, now I do, and it's fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. Arcane is 100%, even if you don't know anything about League of Legends, it is 100% the best TV show I've seen this year, and I am absolutely blown away. I did not think that I was going to enjoy it. Well, I mean, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it that much. Because, like I said, no knowledge of the universe that it's based in. But it's this really interesting sort of timeline where it follows several of the characters throughout, I guess, probably about five or maybe about eight or nine years, actually. And it really gives you a solid backstory to all of these characters and it explains, like, how they grew up, who they grew up with, their sort of family, their jobs, careers, and also this incredible conflict between... A city called Piltover and the city below it as well, which is this sort of poverty-stricken, much darker, much more dangerous kind of area, whereas Piltover is this obviously extremely rich, very sort of scientifically advanced, politically, I guess just politically run city, where they have this whole council who make all the decisions, they have scientists, they've got doctors, all of that modern society kind of stuff. And then dealing with constant attacks from underneath the city and also a very gradually building drug trade as well. Which it goes into quite a lot with the sort of problems that the Undercity has with drugs. And the building up of this crime syndicate that overruns it. And um, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, very good. <laughs> like I said, you don't need any... Well, I didn't have any knowledge going in. I'm sure fans of the game probably really enjoyed it as well. But as someone who's completely new to it, the way that it explains and builds up the characters and gives them the backstory just goes in so easily. And it's really kind of an addictive viewing because you just want to see what happens next. So I know that it came out in three episode blocks, which was like Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Like I said, I just watched it all in one go. It took me like two days maybe. <laughs> Maybe even less than that. Um, and I'm going to rewatch it as well because I enjoyed it that much. The biggest thing that stands out to me, or the two biggest things that stand out to me about Arcane, is the animation style, which is beautiful. And I don't know what the budget for Arcane was, but the quality that they've come out with, which doesn't dip at any point either. At no point did I think, oh, that looks a bit cheap, or, you know, that's a bit out of focus, or nasty looking at no point did i think that it's just all nine episodes all the way through absolutely beautiful absolutely stunning and the world they've created as well like the the vision of the world that they've got in this show is just stunning as well um the other thing that stands out quite a lot is the music as well uh it features a lot of original music from imagine dragons who i understand did music for the game as well they also appeared in the show very briefly very very briefly um <laughs> but that was quite quite amusing to watch and that was a really great scene where they tied in the band's performance with what was going on behind the scenes um absolutely brilliant stuff so out of ev pretty much everything i've watched this year that's the that's the thing that i'd recommend the most other than spider-man no way home which i mentioned in the movies video obviously just give it a look absolutely brilliant stuff and like i said you don't need any knowledge of league of legends at all because I didn't know anything about it and I didn't really have any trouble understanding any of it, which was fantastic. It's it's really a testament to how well it was written as well, that you can go into it completely blind to 
everything about the universe and still get that kind of response from it and that kind of enjoyment from it as well. So go and give it a watch. Okay, last one. I said it was a top five-ish, just like the movies ones. I just want to give a special mention to Midnight Mass, which is a horror series from Mike Flanagan, who also made The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Blind Manor. And it's about a very small community who live on an island off the east coast of the United States. And it's very small. I think they, they, they mentioned the population is around 100, maybe a little bit more if I remember rightly. And it's essentially just a small town, sheriff's office, and a church. And that's pretty much all you're going to see of the town. <laughs> that's basically it. And also, like, the harbour, because there's a, a ferry that goes back and forth. But that is that is pretty much it. And uh, it's about a priest who comes over from the mainland to take over the church's sermons after the original priest leaves. And basically his whole story is that the original priest... Uh, has, has taken ill and won't be able to give the sermons for the foreseeable future. So this new young priest comes in, starts giving the sermons, and I don't want to give too much away other than it gets a little bit violent in places and it gets a little bit weird. It gets a little bit weird. But the writing in it is what really impressed me. It's got a lot... Some people might find it a bit slow and a bit dull. Uh, it features a lot of very, very long monologues. And uh, I feel like, I think there's a monologue in there that is approaching 10 minutes, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't sound too long, but that's like a quarter of an episode. Um, but it's a very sort of philosophical, existential kind of kind of series where they talk about life and death a lot. They talk about how you see yourself, uh, where you see yourself going, the way you perceive everything around you. And it's, it's super interesting. Like I said, it might be a bit slow and a bit dull for some people. Um, so if that's not really your kind of thing, then absolutely skip over it. But I did say it's a horror as well. It's not as scary as some other things. Um, it's definitely not as scary as the Haunting series. It does have a few jumps here and there. But overall, it's exactly my kind of horror where it's not just constant jump scares and you know, just loud sounds, which, let's, let's be honest, a lot of horror movies do that. It's got a really great atmospheric setting where it's just tense. And it's that kind of thing where you feel your heart rate going up a little bit and you can kind of feel something coming. And it's just this really creepy, creepy kind of setting. Um, and that really, no, it's really added to the fact that it's, it's just on this island where there's barely anyone and it's just the middle of nowhere it's dark, it's foggy, it's just that really sort of, Ooh, I don't like this kind of feeling. Um, but that's definitely fantastic, and you should give that a watch as well. That's gone way past a special mention. To be honest, I might as well have just called this top six, because I feel like I've talked about Midnight Mass more than I've talked about Squid Game, actually. But it's whatever. Take it as it comes. Anyway... Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you want to see more videos like this one. And also if you'd like me to speak a little more in depth about some of these TV shows or movies. I know this is a very sort of quick kind of overview in a lot of cases. I don't really go into detail because obviously I don't want to spoil things. But if you would like me to talk more... God, that's going to be a rare response. If you would like me to talk more about any of these TV shows or movies, then please let me know. And I hope you have a lovely new year. I'm assuming that this video is going to come out before new year. Knowing my productivity, it might not, but we'll find out. But thank you again. Have yourself a very lovely rest of 2021. And we'll see you in the next video.